Sorry, okay, I just have to get it out of my system. Let's try that again. Hi, it's Samantha Brooks, and welcome to Samantha TV, the place to be to build wealth on your road to financial freedom. You know what? It seems you can't open up a newspaper or read a post blog these days and not hear something about foreign investors buying real estate in the Toronto or Vancouver area. The housing market in BC has become so saturated with foreign investors that the provincial government had to ultimately step in and implement a foreign buyer's tax with the hopes to rein in housing prices so homes could be more affordable to the middle class. Now with all this chaos going on in the housing market, have you found yourself wondering why are so many people choosing to invest in real estate here in Canada? If so, this episode is definitely for you. Warren Buffett, who's one of the richest businessmen alive and known as an investment guru, said something that has always stuck with me. He said, if you don't find a way to make money while you sleep, you'll work until you die. Those are some strong words that almost force you to think about the way you use your time and your money. Robert Kiyosaki is an entrepreneur investor and author of best-selling Rich Dad Poor Dad series. He has a book that I absolutely love. It's called The Cashflow Quadrant. Here's why I love this book so much. In The Cashflow Quadrant, he goes over four different ways to produce income and he breaks them up into quadrants. On the left side, you have the E for employee and S self-employed entrepreneur. These are people who mainly trade in their time for money in hopes of finding financial security. On the right, you have the B, which is the systemized business owner and the I for investor. These are the people who get their money to work for them. In other words, they make passive income, allowing them to make money while they sleep. Now, for the majority of us, we fall on the left side of the quadrant, being employees and self-employed entrepreneurs. When you read the book, it actually challenges us to change our mindset and learn how to become an investor with the goal of becoming financially free. Now, can you guess what are the top strategies they recommend to becoming an investor? You guessed it, real estate. So if you're a first time real estate investor looking to get into the market, we have six tips to get you started. First, talk with your mortgage broker or your bank to determine how much money you can afford to borrow responsibly. Checking your credit score beforehand will give you some insight on your current debt to income ratio. Next, identify which real estate strategy fits your overall goal. With so many options available from buy and hold to flipping, you'll need to determine what mix fits your investment portfolio. Third, use an experienced real estate agent who also invests in real estate. Real estate investors learn about the pitfalls only through first-hand experience, so you want someone with that level of expertise working for you. Next, if you're looking for a house to rent out, look for properties that generate a positive cash flow. What this means is that the rent that you receive from your tenants should be enough to cover your expenses like the mortgage, the property taxes, your utilities, insurance, and provide you with a profit to pocket every single month. Finding homes in a city that meet this criteria may be difficult, so don't be afraid to expand your search to the suburbs in order to find the right purchase. Fifth, have any property inspected by a professional home inspector. Also, find a contractor that you can trust to give you the right advice about repairs or renovations, especially with older homes since you want to get the most value out of your investment. Lastly, have an exit strategy for your investments. Over time, your properties can build quite a bit of equity and provide you with a substantial amount of income and appreciation. Some people choose to hold on to their investments indefinitely, but you may need to get rid of one of your properties for various reasons. So choosing an exit strategy is critical for maximizing profits and minimizing risks. Overall, we've only scratched the surface on how to invest in real estate, and like any other investment, it's important to note that there's always risk involved. So you'll need to understand your risk tolerance and do your due diligence before you begin investing. But when done correctly, investing in real estate can provide you with a passive income that can put you on the road to financial freedom. Now I have a question for you. Looking back at what Robert Kiyosaki's Cashflow Quadrant said, what side of the quadrant are you on today? And what side would you like to be on in six months from now or even a year down the road? As always, leave your comments below to join the conversation. Did you enjoy this video? Then subscribe to our YouTube channel and stay up to date on our latest posts. And if you know someone who can benefit from this message, then we invite you to share this video with them. I want to thank you so much for watching this episode of Samantha TV. And until next time, choose kindness and laugh often.
post blog? No, I did not. Twice post blog. Oh, stop. Blog post. Blog post. Blog post. Blog post. Yeah. yeah. It seems you can't open up a newspaper or read a post blog these days and not hear something about foreign investors buying real estate in the Toronto or Vancouver area. Post blog again. Will anybody really notice? Yes. Oh, sh <laughs>